the experiment that we will be doing today is related to simple pendulum. A, using the simple pendulum, we have to calculate the value for acceleration due to gravity of a given place and to plot LT square graph and find the effective length of a second pendulum using the graph. The apparatus needed are a metallic bob with a hook, a clamp stand, string, whirling calipers, stopwatch and a meter scale. The apparatus required are a vernier calipers, a stop clock, a meter scale and a retort stand or a clamp stand in which a simple pendulum is suspended. The length of a pendulum is from the point of the suspension to the center of the bob. The radius of the bob can be calculated by the help of a device that is a vernier calipers. This is a stop clock. Stop clock is used to find the time taken for a number of oscillations. In this experiment, we will be taking the time taken for 20 oscillations for various length. This switch is the switch we will set it into motion and similarly pressing it down will stop the stop clock. This switch will refresh it back to the zero reading. Theory. To calculate the time period, we use the formula t is equal to 2 pi, the whole root of L by G, where L is the effective length of the pendulum, that is the thread plus the bob, and G is the acceleration due to gravity at a place. A second pendulum is that pendulum whose length is such that it completes one vibration or one oscillation in two seconds. Place the metallic bob between the jaws of the vernier calipers and note down the observation. So you can see that the main scale reading is 2.5 and the vernier scale reading is 3. So the main scale reading is 2.5 and the vernier scale is 3 and you know that the least count of a vernier caliper is 0 0.01 centimeter. So the main scale reading we got was 2.5, the vernier scale reading was 3, so the diameter is equal to main scale reading plus vernier scale reading into the least count will give you 2.53 to find the radius divided by 2 so you will get an answer of 1.265 that you can round it off to 1.3 so we will write here the radius as 1.3 centimeter to measure the effective length of the thread we have to include the length of the pendulum is from the point of suspension to the center of the metallic bob. So we need a total length of 50 cm. So that means we have to subtract the radius from it. So it is 50 minus 1.3. So the length of the string should be 48.7. So we get here 48, 48.5, 48.6 and 48.7. So hold it and try to secure it between the clamps of the retort stand. Pull the string in a straight line and then wind it over the other end of the retort stand to keep the length of the simple pendulum fixed. So now you can see that the length of the simple pendulum is 50 centimeter from the point of suspension to the center of the metallic bob. Displace the bob for a very small displacement from its mean position and note down the time taken for 20 oscillations. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. You can see here the time taken for the 20 oscillations when the length was 50 is around 29 seconds. Then set of reading again for 20 oscillations note down the time taken. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You can see that in the second observation, the time taken is around 28 seconds. The length of the radius was 48.7. Including the radius gives you the total length of the pendulum that is 50 centimeter. The time taken was 29 seconds for the first set of observation, and the time taken during the second set of observations was 28 seconds. So the mean is 28.5. Similarly, you can note down the time taken for the oscillations for 20 counts for the total length of the string when it is 60, 70, 80 and 90. We had calculated the diameter using the Vernier calipers, we found it to be 2.53. The radius was calculated as 1.3. The effective length of the pendulum is 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. But from each of this reading, when we take the time taken for 20 oscillations, we have to subtract the reading that we had obtained for the radius, that is 50 minus 1.3, so which will yield 48.7. Similarly, 60 minus 1.3, 58.7 and so on. Repeat the procedures for various lengths like 60, 70, 80, 90, increasing in the steps of 10 cm and observe the time taken for the 20 oscillations. To calculate the time period, we have to take t is equal to t by 20. So here we get the mean of t1 and t2 was 28.5. So it is 28.5 by 20 which will give you 1.43 seconds. The next column is t square. So it is 1.43 the whole square approximately you will get 2.04. Then the next is to calculate L by T square. So L is the length of the effective thread that is 50. So it is 50 by 2.04 which will yield 24.51. Similarly do the observations for do the calculations for the rest of the observations and you will get the readings as 24, 25.74, 24.69, 24.93 and Take the mean of these readings, find L by T square mean which will be 123.87 by 5, you will get a reading of 24.77 cm square. To find the length of the second pendulum, we have to plot a graph between L T square, L in the X axis and T square in the Y axis. Choose an appropriate scale. So here we had chosen on the X axis, this is 10 division is equal to 10 centimeter. 
and on the y axis 10 division is equal to 1 second square so plot for the corresponding data and we get an approximate straight line passing through the points so we can find that when the length is approximately 100 centimeter the square of the time period is 4 so we can say that the length of the second pendulum from the graph is 100 centimeter to find the acceleration due to gravity that is g you have to substitute the values in the formula g is equal to 4 pi square l by t square so it is g is equal to 4 into 3.14 into 3.14 into the mean of l by t square that is 24.77 that we had calculated so we get the answer as 976.89 centimeter per second square so acceleration due to gravity g is equal to 976.89 centimeter per second square or it can be 9.76 meter per second square approximately equal to 9.8 meter per second square thus the result shows that the acceleration due to gravity g is equal to approximately 9.76 meter per second square and the length of the second spindle long from the graph is equal to 100 centimeter